Luke chapter number 8. We'll begin reading verse 41. The Bible says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had only one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Let's pray. Father, we sure do thank you we can come to the house of God this morning. Lord, we're thankful that you provided a nice place where the roof's not leaking and we're not having any problems out in front of the weather. But God, we can come and we can put our attention, our focus upon the darling Lamb of God. God, we're thankful you're the peace speaker. We're thankful, Lord, that uh, you went to Calvary and paid our sin debt. And God, we're thankful for the day you came to where I was and convicted me of sin and saved my never-dying soul. God, we're thankful that we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth, and we can come and we can uh, sing songs of praise of thee. And God, we can open the bread of life and look into the perfect law of liberty, and God, glean from the truths of thy word. Uh, and God, we're even thankful we can come on this day that we celebrate Mother's Day and honor these godly mothers in here today. But Lord, as we have come to this portion of the service, we're thankful for the good singing. We're thankful for the good Sunday school hour. But God, we need your help. Lord, you said in John 15 that, Lord, without you we can do nothing. Lord, all of our abilities to speak and all of our intellect and all of our uh, uh, poise, uh, Lord, it will avail nothing without the touch of the Holy Ghost of God. So, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would help me to get out of the way, and you who are the way, the truth, and the life would show up and manifest yourself in a powerful and a wonderful way. Now, Lord, as we are here, my heart is heavy. Because, Lord, I realize there's somebody that needs some help. Now, Lord, I, I can't help them, but I can point them to you. So, Father, I pray you'd just arrange the atmosphere now. I pray that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would not be grieved or quenched, but allowed to do his office work. God, if there's somebody here lost, I pray through, through Holy Ghost conviction they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ even this very hour. Father, if there's somebody here saved, but, Lord, they're here, but their heart is far from you, I pray today would be the day they get right with the Lord. Father, if there's somebody here saved, serving God, doing the best they can to be faithful, I pray you'd bless them, give them something. But Lord, there may be somebody here seeking some answers, seeking some strength, seeking the will of God. Lord, whatever the need, I pray you'd show up big and help folks. Use this unworthy vessel now. Get glory to your glorious name. We'll bless you and praise you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to these two verses. And I want you to notice the person of renown. The Bible says in verse 41, There came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. This man came to where Jesus was, and he is a man of renown. Brother Jim, it didn't say he's a man who attended the synagogue. Uh, Brother Doug, he didn't say he was a man who uh, cleaned the synagogue. This man is a ruler of the synagogue. Uh, matter of fact, Brother Phil, just by him going to where Jesus is at, he is putting his position and his job in jeopardy uh, for if the Pharisees find out that this ruler is there speaking with Jesus, they're going to look at him in disdain. This is a man of renown. This is a man, Brother Rod, that has to eat a lot of humble pie to come to where Jesus is at. We see a person of renown. I want you to notice the place of desperation. Look again in your Bible, verse 41. It says, And he fell down at Jesus' feet 
and besought him that he would come into his house for he had one only daughter about 12 years of age and she lay a dying. Uh, he is in a place of desperation. He is at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, pleading for some help. Mm, it's amazing to me, uh, Brother Tommy, that uh, his religion isn't helping him right now. Mm, all of his study is not helping him right now. Uh, Brother Bob, all of his prayer life isn't helping him right now. Uh, as uh, a matter of fact, Brother Donald, uh, he has come to the conclusion uh, if there's any hope for his daughter, uh, it'll only be found at the feet of Jesus. Uh, he is in a place of desperation. Mm -hmm. Can I help you with something this morning? You're never going to get help till you get desperate. Can I say a drunk will never turn from the bottle so he gets desperate and he's willing to turn to the Lord. Can I say an addict will never ever get help until they get desperate and they're willing to turn to the Lord. Can I say a sinner is never going to get saved until uh, they get good and desperate and lost uh, and they turn to Jesus for salvation. Can I say a good moral church member is never going to have the power of God in their life till they get desperate and realize they don't have the power of God in their life and they turn to Jesus. Huh? Can I say with the Lord, He deals in absolutes. He deals in transparency. He deals in truth. You're not going to hoodwink God. He knows all about you, friend. This is a person of renown. He's in a place of desperation. But notice, if you will, the possibility seems... Helpless. Look what happens. Verse 42 says, His daughter lay to dying. He says, But as he went, the people thronged him. Look at verse 49. And while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. The possibility now seems helpless. There's no more hope. He comes to Jesus. By the way, that's the best place you can ever bring your problems, to Jesus. He comes to Jesus, Brother Brian, but he doesn't come uh, uh, arrogantly or flippantly. He's at the feet of Jesus. He's humbled. He comes to Jesus. And then the Bible says, and as they went, the people thronged him, thronging Jesus. Did you ever come to Jesus and it feels like Jesus is helping everybody else, but he's not helping you? That's where he's at. Seems hopeless. Uh, matter of fact, nobody ever came to Jesus and left the same way they came. Matter of fact, the Bible says when, they, when the multitudes would come to him, he'd heal them all. Uh, but it... He's not getting what he needs. Everybody else is taking Jesus' time. And now one of his servants comes and says, Don't trouble the master, your daughter's dead. Hmm. Now let me just say, as I preached on this topic a long time ago, it's no trouble for the master. Just put that right out there. I don't care where you are, what you're facing. It may be way too big for you, but it's not too big for him. Uh, but can I say this? Luke chapter 8 is a chapter of miracles. There is the miracle of deliverance in this chapter. In verses 20 through 2 through 25, uh, you know the story. Uh, uh, the disciples are in a ship on the sea. Uh, a storm comes in. Uh, the, wa uh, the boat starts taking on water where the uh, boat's about full. Uh, and they went and Jesus was asleep in the uh, 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 hinder part of the ship. They said, Master, care not that we perish. Uh, and they went and they got the Lord. Uh, and he stood on the bow of the ship. Uh, he rebuked the winds and the waves. Uh, and the peace came upon that thing. Uh, and they were delivered safely uh, uh, to shore. Uh, uh, 
mean you may be here today uh, and it may look like there is no hope. Uh, it may look like there is no way out. Uh, all you need is Jesus. Get on board your boat. Uh, understand and say peace be still. Uh, and everything can change in your life. Uh, there's a miracle deliverance in this chapter. There's a miracle uh, 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 where God uh, uh, overthrows demons in this chapter. We find where the Lord comes uh, uh, to the country of the Gadarenes and there's a man there by the name of Legion. He's possessed with many demons. They chain him to the tombs and he'd break the chains. Uh, and he's out running around the graveyard uh, 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 with no clothes on. Can I help you with something? If there's somebody running around a graveyard, number one, that's weird. Number two, if they're running around stark naked, they're really weird. I'd highly suggest leave them alone. Hmm? but uh, he comes to Jesus and Jesus delivers him of them demons they find this man clothed in his right mind and then the townspeople got afraid they weren't too worried about him when he was running around out there howling at the moon but when they find him at the feet of Jesus huh that's the way some of your loved ones look at you. They didn't mind when you was out carousing around and howling at the moon, acting like a fool. Uh, but when you get bored again uh, and you started getting dressed up and come to church on Sunday, they got a little afraid of you. Mm -mm. There's the miracle of deliverance. There's a miracle over demons. There's a miracle over disease. Right after Jairus comes to Jesus, there's a woman with an issue of blood. She's had this uh, issue of blood. She is hemorrhaged for 12 years. The Bible says that uh, 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 she'd spent all she had going to many physicians, uh, but she didn't get better. She grew worse. Now she's broke. She's still uh, uh, in a mess. Uh, there is no hope for her. Uh, but she says uh, somebody told her about Jesus. I don't know who told her. Maybe that madman had told her. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, Zacchaeus had told her. Uh, maybe it was uh, blind Bartimaeus. She said, hey, Bartimaeus, what are you doing looking around? I thought you was blind. She said, I met Jesus. Uh, I don't know. Somebody told her about Jesus. Uh, and she heard he was coming through town. Uh, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garments. Uh, hey, and when she did, uh, hey, virtue went out of him. He said, who touched me? Uh, Peter said, Lord, there's a multitude thronging you. And you said, who touched me? Uh, hey, and she got help that day and was healed of her disease. That's a chapter of miracles. And then there's the miracle over death. I believe the servant, when he told the master, Jairus, that his daughter was dead. She was dead. Now, he probably wasn't Dr. Fauci, but he probably knew if somebody was alive or not. You know, because Fauci knows everything. But can I say, she's dead. Would you go read the rest of the chapter? Jesus gets down there and he tells the crowd that's mourning her death, says, she's just sleeping. Well, when the resurrection and the life shows up and says she's just asleep, she's just sleeping because he had power over death. Huh? They laughed at him. He threw them out. Took mom and daddy in there, told that maid to rise, she got up. And then he said, don't tell anybody what happened. Of course, everybody knows about it because we're still talking about 2,000 years later. huh? Right. There's a miracle over death. Right. This is a chapter of miracles. So I want to preach on this little thought for just a minute this morning. I want to preach on, do you need a miracle? Do you need a miracle? Now, I'm not going full-blown charismatic on you. I'm not going to channel my inner Joel Osteen. But what has happened is we've allowed that crowd to rob us of the God of the Bible. God is still in the miracle business. 
Huh? And I'm not talking about a sleight of hand. I'm not talking about trying to get your money out of you. Uh, I'm not talking about anything that is humanly possible. I'm talking about things that only God can do. Uh, hey, I'm looking around here. I'm seeing a bunch of miracles in here. Uh, I'm looking at what the world used to call drunks uh, and drug addicts uh, and whoremongers uh, and thieves uh, and wicked folks. Uh, but look at you. Uh, you're clothed uh, in your right mind, uh, sitting in the house of God. Uh, Worshiping God. Uh, you used to be on your way to hell. Uh, now you're on your way to heaven. Uh, you used to be the Oscar of the world. Uh, now you're part of the family of God. Uh, don't tell me uh, God's not in the miracle business. Uh, changes lives every day. And if you need a miracle, you're in the right place. Because He can change your life too. The problem, Brother Bob, isn't that God can't do miracles. The problem is, is we don't know how to get a miracle. We've listened to TBN so long, we don't even know what a miracle is. Uh, some joker that used to be in a rock band in the 70s still got hair down to his waist. Uh, can't even talk for all the cigarettes he's choked on. He's going to try and tell me about the holiness and the power of God. And this joker wouldn't know God if he sat down next to him. We'll put more faith in him than we will the Bible. Uh, so do you need a miracle today? I know, I said cigarettes. I done messed them up, James. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, God forgive me and help all the pygmies down there in Africa, okay? You know, bless God. I believe God can heal you that stuff too, huh? I just believe when you get in Christ, you become a new creature. Old things pass away, but old, old things come new. He changed me from the inside out. He's still working on me. I'm not perfect. But do you need a miracle? Can I say, in order to receive a miracle, the first and foremost thing you have to do is you must face the Lord. Look with me, if you will, in verse 24. I want you to see it. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. The sea wasn't calmed until they faced the Master. Look at verse 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. The man possessed with the demons had to confront Jesus. Look with me in verse number 41 again. And he fell down at Jesus' feet. The ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, had to come to Jesus. Look at verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. She had to come to Jesus. If you need a miracle today, you're not going to get it. Come to church. You're not going to get it coming to the preacher. You're not going to get your miracle in anything other than the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to come face to face and acknowledge He is the miracle giver. Until you confront Him, you'll never get a miracle. You must face Jesus to get a miracle. No sinner gets saved till they come to Jesus and call on the Lord. Hmm? You've got to come to Jesus. Can I say, Brother Phil, there's no shortage of people knowing they need a miracle. There's a lot of people know they need something. But you're looking in the wrong avenues to get it. If you're going to get a miracle, you must face the Lord. Can I say second of all? You must stay focused. In Mark's account of the same story, it says in Mark 5, 23, talking about Jairus, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she, she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. 
We well, already told you everybody was trying to get to Jesus. Jesus actually started with Jairus to Jairus' house and the people thronged him. And then the woman with the issue of blood butts in. And all the while, Jairus is right here saying, Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you're going to get a miracle, you've got to stay focused. Your miracle is not conditional on your timing. It's on His timing. He does all things well. Jesus helped all them other folks, the woman with the issue of blood, and He showed up right on time to help that girl. Jesus will move in your life, but you've got to stay focused. Here's the problem, Miss Chloe. When all I can see is that I need a miracle, I get focused on the miracle. And I don't stay focused on Jesus. You've got to stay focused. God's ways are not our ways. And God does things on His own timing that brings glory to Him. I'm thinking of that song Miss Lynn sings about, isn't it about time, the potter on the, on the wheel? We think uh, we're ready. We think God's a, a, a God. Isn't it about time to uh, uh, pull us out of the brick kiln and, and show us off? But uh, uh, friend, He knows exactly when to pull you out of the brick kiln. He knows exactly uh, 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 when to put the finishing touch on what He's doing in your life. Uh, he doesn't want you to get out and crack. Uh, he wants you to be exactly the vessel He wants you to be. It's always about His time. Amen. He knows all things, friend. Y'all remember when Lazarus died? Martha accused him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. Lazarus had died for Jesus to get glory. Can I say, sometimes your miracle might be, a trial might be the blessing. You think of that, that little song Bella sings. Mm. Just stay focused. You must face the Lord, but you must stay focused. And then, most importantly here, you need a miracle, you've got to have faith. Hmm? Look at verse 49. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. Boy, it would be sad if we stopped right there, wouldn't it? Look at verse 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now, he's got a choice. He can believe the messenger, or he can believe the master. Can I say, without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. You need a miracle, you better, you better, you better find some faith. You've got to put your faith in what God can do. Matthew 17, verse 19, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, uh, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible mm, to you. Can I say? You don't need to be loaded with faith. You just need a little faith. Mm -mm. Don't wait till you're loaded with faith. You'll never get there. Faith the size of a seed of grain of mustard seed can move mountains. But you need faith if you're going to get a miracle. Huh? Can I say little faith is attained through hearing the promises of God? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How do I get faith? Get in the Bible. Start reading those promises. Start believing those promises. Start trusting in those promises. Just uh, 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 God said it, that settles it. I'm going to believe it. Hmm? Your little faith begins in hearing the promises. Little faith comes from heeding the promises. It's one thing to read it, it's another thing to put it into practice. Just do it. Just do what God says. It's an amazing thing. You know who, who, who believes that tithing don't work? People that don't tithe. You know who believes tithing works? People that proved it. Uh, they not only tithe, they've learned to give an offering on top of it. Then they've learned you can't outgive God. The more they give God, the more God just blesses and blesses and blesses, and you couldn't get them to stop tithing. Hmm? Hmm? 
Tithing's a faith thing. Everything's a faith thing. It's amazing how we got enough faith to come to church and not enough faith to trust God with our pocketbook. Woo, boy, that went over real good. Huh? I'm telling you, you've got to heed the promises. Hear them's good, but you've got to heed them. You've got to put them into practice. And then you've got to hold on to the promises. Sometimes you just got to cling, cling a promise and just hold on to it. Hmm? I don't know how many times I've, I've, I've quoted the Word of God to God. God knows it. Why am I quoting it to Him? So I make sure I get it good, de- good deep down. Hmm? And also let God know I'm believing this right here, God. You said it. I'm just going to believe it. Hmm? If, if the whole world falls apart and my life is destroyed, I'm going to be destroyed hanging on this promise right here. Hmm? That's where little faith comes from. You've got to have faith. There are some things you will never, ever convince me they're not so because God's proven them in my life. Because I've read the Bible, I've believed the Bible, I've hung on the Bible, and God's proved it to me. Hmm? You're not going to get me to back up on it. Why? God's just been that real to me. So I want God that real to me. Get in the Bible, get your promise, yeah. put it into practice. Hang on, he'll prove himself to you too. He's no respecter of persons. Hmm? Uh, it amazes me how people believe God's big enough to save them, take them to heaven, but they don't believe God's big enough to help them live their life. Mm-mm. He's helped me 47 years, friend, and he'll help you too. Uh, listen, you need a miracle? you got to face the Lord. you got to face Him. you got to stay focused. It may not work out the way you want it to work out. Miss Lynn, how many folks have I seen over the years? Boy, they run in, they need God to move today. If God don't move today, they just do away with God in their life. It's because it's not about God. It's about them. Hmm? you got to stay focused. you got to stay focused, boys. Jesus never let you down. Hmm? I thought about this lastly. got to face the Lord, you've got to stay focused, you've got to have faith. But if you need a miracle, you've got to commit to following, following the Lord regardless of the miracle. You've got to follow Him regardless of the miracle. Daniel says this in chapter 3, you know the story, the three Hebrews at the furnace, fiery furnace, verse 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's answering the king. They said, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They said, Our God's able to deliver us. Now, Brother Tommy, they're saying this as the furnace is being heated up. They said, but even if he don't, king, we're not bowing down to your goofy image. Hmm? You've got to be committed to follow Jesus regardless of the miracle. So many folks don't get a miracle because the miracle is your emphasis. When you're committed to following Jesus, the master not the miracle becomes the preeminence and when you truly have the master (laughs) the miracle loses its significance I really need a miracle no what you really need is the master you get the master you get him and the miracle because it don't matter anymore Hmm? when you get the peace speaker you get the peace too hmm he may, he may part your Red Sea, or He may just give you peace to go through it. Either way, when you got Him on board, it don't matter. It don't matter. Too many people put all the emphasis, if He doesn't do this, then it won't work out. Or if He just steps in, it's already worked out. Hmm? When you commit to following Him, Brother Eddie, the miracle's just icing on top of the cake. 
Do you need a miracle? I'm here to tell you what you really need to In a minute, we're going to have an invitation. Some of you are wanting a lightning bolt strike from heaven and let you know if God cares about you. I got news for you, He does. He's loved you with an everlasting love. He's allowed you to be here today. He's allowed you to hear that you need Him. And when you get Him, you get the miracle. And today, He'll change your life if you'll come to Him. He's not going to force you to come. He's not going to send you shock waves to let you know it's time to come. He's inviting you to come. Now, whether or not you come is up to you. The other night, Brother Jim and Miss Judy invited us to bring Brother Sammy down to their place. We've never been to their place. They invited us to come. Now, I could have said, I'll pass. I don't want to spend time with Jim, but I didn't. We accepted the invitation. We went enjoyed their their place got to see their place as a blessing but you see just like the Lord just accepting the invitation is just the starting point then we got down there and she had honey baked ham real mashed potatoes corn on the cob homemade cat head biscuits huh y'all getting hungry apple crisp and ice cream are you listening see when you Accept the invitation of the Lord. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Uh, 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 he said, Whosoever is a thirst, let him come. Uh, hey, uh, uh, in a minute, we're going to invite you to come to the Lord. Uh, and when you come, uh, uh, friend, what a blessing. You not only get Him, you get all of heaven with Him. Uh, and all the blessings of heaven. Uh, and all the joys of heaven. Uh, all the hope of heaven. Uh, hey, all the peace of heaven. Uh, all the, the, the wonderful things that He has, He gives you when you come I had no idea the third Saturday night of March of 1974 when I came forward to, to get saved that you know that would, in, in salvation all I'd get I just knew I needed to get saved I got saved good and saved hallelujah what a blessing I had no idea I'd get a friend that sticking closer than a brother I had no idea I'd have a peace in the midst of my storms. Uh, I had no idea the fruits of the Spirit and what nine of them that were and what they would do in my life. Uh, I had no idea uh, uh, that, hey, uh, I had an anchor steadfast and sure within the veil. Uh, I had no idea all that God was going to do in my life. Uh, had no idea that he was already preparing a mate for me. Had no idea that he was already uh, 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 working in my life. I had no idea all God was going to do. I'm glad I just accepted the invitation. I'm glad I went to and accepted your invitation. We had a blast. But Jesus' invitation is even better than yours. Hmm? Uh, some of you might be here and say, Preacher, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I need God to move in my life. But well, the arms are still outstretched. What you need is Him. Quit looking for His hand and just get Him. Uh, you get Him, the rest don't matter. It'll be all right. Some of you just need to come. You need a miracle today. The miracle you need is to get over you and get to Him. And then everything else will be all right. I wonder this morning, you tired of being lost? You know you're lost? Well, why wouldn't you get saved? Huh? I mean, Brother Bob, if I starved to death, and I walk by a bakery every day, and the baker would open the door and say, Hey, why don't you come on in? I'll give you something to eat. And I just say, That's okay, I'm good. And I just kept walking by. It's crazy. Especially the smell of good baked goods. There's nothing like a bakery. I believe there's going to be a bakery in heaven. You know what I'm saying? There is. Manna came from somewhere. That's right. Uh, but listen. Why would people who know their loss, know they need to be saved, come to the house of God and smell the goodness of God and not pull up and die? Not come and get the Lord Jesus Christ. Today's your day. You need to come. Maybe you're here today, you're saved. God's been good in your life. But it's been a while since you just thanked Him for being your miracle. Today might be a good day for you to just thank Him for loving you and caring for you even better than your mama did. Maybe today you need to come and just tell him you love him. 
Maybe today you have a very traumatic thing in your life and you need God's help. Why don't you come? Just come. He said if you come to him, he no wise cast you out. Let him, let him help you today. Oh, there's nobody like Jesus. It changed your life. Folks are coming. Let's all stand. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, why don't you come? We'll, get, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Miss Renee, come. and Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Folks are coming. Let's pray. Father, we love you. <coughs> We're glad you're in the miracle business. It's a miracle, God, that you even care about us, let alone willing to help us. Now, Father, I pray... You just speak to hearts right now. Many have already come. Lord, you know the need. You know why they're there. I pray you'd help folks. There may be somebody here that's lost, not saved. I believe there are lost people here. God, I pray they'd come, get born again. God, I pray for saved folks that are troubled. God, help them to come, get some help. Maybe some just need to come, show some gratitude, Lord. Lord, help folks to come and embrace the master and they realize in doing so they have the miracle God just speak to hearts bless this invitation now get glory to your name we'll thank you for it in Jesus name we pray Amen Do you struggle to find good Bible based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on bookstore where we have a ton of resources and as always thanks for listening